see Bruce yeah, all the time, I always loved how clean he was. So every time I would see him, I would say, damn, man. You know, this is back when the jazz scene was raggedy. You know, everybody was trying to see how much they could either imitate rock musicians or how informal they could be. I never could understand it. Coming from the country, kind of Kent, Louisiana, people that didn't really have nothing, they always would get dressed up like church. It meant something. Then you come to New York and you think, man, you know, wow. Everybody trying to look like we playing ball or something. But Bruce was always, when you saw him, man, he was always correct. And I always would comment on his, his sartorial splendor. It'd be like shoes, everything, the, had the pocket square, the tie just always clean, always carried himself with a lot of dignity and love of the music and musicians. And the musicians loved him, which was not always the case with musicians and business people. The kind of sense of mistrust and the outright hostility that musicians would have toward business people at that time, they did not have toward him. Can you remember any, any situations where that, that kind yeah. of sentiment came up? Everybody. You, you, you could take your pick. You know, our Blakey, yeah, this guy's about the music. Bruce is about the music. Herbie, Bruce is about the music. You could take your, any musician that knew about the music when Bruce's name come up. He's not like the rest of them. He's somebody who's about the music. He loves the music. He knows about the music. He's, which was different from the breed of executive that was in the record industry at that time. Um, mainly people just want to make some money or whatever is mm -hmm. popular. With him, it was more uh, like he knew about the music and about musicians. Cool.